Airtable isn't just for tracking data or managing your work. You and your team can use it to generate and send invoices, pull in line items, calculate totals, use Airtable to generate a polished invoice document and even email it to your client. No copy and pasting, no extra tool subscriptions, and definitely no missed line items. If you're already using Airtable to manage your team's work, this setup can streamline your invoicing and save you hours every week. Hey there, I'm Alex Knowles from automationhelpers.com, and we help companies get automated using industry-leading portals, apps, and integrations. Now, this invoicing system is just a small part of a much larger Airtable automation system. So if you're eager to learn how you could connect your business processes in a single operating system, make sure to check the video linked here. If you're using Airtable to track your clients, manage your projects, or streamline your sales, well, you're already halfway there to a fully automated business operating system. Missing link, invoice automation. With the right Airtable setup, a smart mix of link tables and interactive interface build, automations, and leaning on tools like Docs Automator or Document, you can turn any base into a one-click invoicing machine. Now, I built an invoicing system directly inside Airtable that does the heavy lifting for me. It pulls in billable services, calculates totals, generates the PDF invoice, stores it, and even emails it to the client all in the one flow. Here we have the building blocks, our Airtable app, and the tables that make this all work. And those tables are broken down into contacts, accounts, services, line items, and invoices. Now it's very important that you do break your data up into multiple tables and then link them back together. It's just a better way to run things. Here we've got the contacts table, which is the people that we're speaking with within our accounts or our clients that we work with. Now we've got the account, which links back into contacts. Here we've got the billable address. Now notice that we've got default payment terms. That's a field by default. Majority of our accounts or our clients are at that 15 net, but we do have a 30 net, which is something we want to remember because we'll look at that later. And that's conditional net payment terms within our invoice. We've also got our services. These are the services that we provide to our clients, consulting session and hourly rate. And then just the line items, these are within pre-existing invoices, which we'll check out soon. Now, you could break this down further and include units so that you could have hourly, per session, monthly retainer, but we're going to keep it simple for this video. Then we've got the line items. So this is actually the work that our team has done. Now, what you could do is you could create a timesheet tracker within Airtable that links directly to this. If you do want to learn how to create a time tracker with Airtable, make sure to check out this linked video. But continuing on, we are just going to be manually adding line items to this tracker here. Here we can see we've got the related or correlating invoice, the hourly rate, quantity, the total amount of that, the client, the linked invoice again, and the service of that so that we can determine and pull in the hourly rate so that we can get that total amount. And then voila, we've got our invoices table. So within here, we're pulling in our account or our client, the date of issue. We've got a formula field here, which takes into account the net payment, which I mentioned earlier. We can see here that for Gamma Industries, they've got a default net payment of 30 days. 30 days after we initiate that invoice, they'll have to pay. So the due date actually takes into account the net payment and it adds 15 days onto majority. So this invoice was issued on the 1st of July. And with 15 days added to that, the due date's the 16th. However, here for Gamma Industries, the 9th of July, we know that adding 30 is going to be the 8th of next month, August. The total amount, the current status, we've set this all to sent currently. I'll just change this bad boy to overdue, this bad boy to draft, and we'll go paid for this. Now, I'm just randomly setting these so that we can see what happens in the back end. We've got our line items. So that's actually the services that we've completed for this account or this client. Now, currently we only have one line item per invoice. We will look at changing that soon. I just want you to get your head wrapped around how this works first. The bill to address, the bill to email, and the hourly rate quantity. And then we've got a generate invoice and approve invoice button, which we'll look at very, very soon. So we took a look at the building blocks of our invoicing system. We know that we've connected our contacts and accounts, our services to line items, our line items to invoices, and those invoices to our clients. But what about automating this? When a new line item is created, we automatically create and link an invoice. This is done 
through Airtable automations. You access Airtable automations from the top navigation, which I'm sure you know. So we need to create an automation with the trigger event being a new line item has been created. So we've got when a record is created in our line items, and then all we need to do is to create a record in, you guessed it, our invoice table. So a simple automation is all that is needed. When a line item is created, we can see here we've selected the line items table. And when a new line item is created, we want to create a correlating or an attached invoice. So we've got a new record being created as the action. The table is invoices. We're bringing in the line item name, the client, the attached account, and the status is updated. Let's just see how this looks when we do it. So we're going to jump into line items. Now you could include a form for your team to fill out rather than actually filling out this database, but I'll just quickly create a line item. And here we can see we've got invoice 11, Gamma Industries. Now the date issued has automatically populated with today's current date. And we've also got net payment, the amount, the status, not currently set. We can set that to draft. However, it depends on how you actually want this to work. You might want the draft status to appear when you've actually generated a document of your invoice, or perhaps you're fine running your invoices through here. So we've completed the building blocks of our invoicing system. We've built the data schema, the invoices, line items, services, accounts, and contacts. Now it's time to do what we are here to do, generate an invoice. Previously, I mentioned there are multiple ways we can do this. We could rely on the page designer extension natively within Airtable to create an invoice document. We could use our financial platforms like QuickBooks or Pandadoc to pass the data from our invoicing system over to QuickBooks and have it created through Zapier, Make, NAN, or an automation platform. Or we can rely on a tool like Document or Docs Automator to create personalized and professional invoice docs on our behalf. Now, I'm just going to quickly touch on using the native page designer. This is accessed through Airtable extensions. On any app, just jump to the top right, select Tools, then select Extensions. Now, you'll need to add an extension, which pushes the limitation and expands the functionality of your Airtable app or base. And from here, if you can't see the page designer from those featured options, just search for it. And here we go. We'll see that it's the one created by Airtable. Make sure you select that. This will open up Airtable's page designer or a document editor. You can change the dimensions of it, but we're just going to jump in and you'll see that you're provided with that initial title there. We've got invoice 001. This can be dynamic content. And that's the whole point of this page designer is to bring in the data from our invoice table and those records and pop it into the document editor or into the generated invoice. Then we can use those documents as our invoices and send them off to our clients. However, there are definitely limitations in using the page designer, especially for invoices. The page designer is great for contracts, proposals, any copy or text heavy documents. But when it comes to your invoices, I suggest using QuickBooks, Pandadoc, a financial platform, or which we'll look at soon, using Docs Automator document to generate beautiful professional invoices. The limitations of the page designer is the page count cannot be dynamic. If you have more line items than others, well, being able to correctly place them on the page, you're going to find that messy. You've also got no conditional visibility. So if we want to create different payment terms like the net 15 and the net 30, not going to be possible with the page designer. You also don't have formulas in the layout. Yes, you can link your existing fields, but those calculated totals, they won't be able to be pulled through. And when it comes to automations, yes, you can use this invoice to be sent to your clients, but when it comes to automating the workflow, it gets pretty sticky. And a final limitation of the page designer comes down to design. Yes, you can create a pretty document, but it definitely lacks in comparison to building beautiful, beautiful documents that portray your brand or business using an alternative like QuickBooks or Docs Automator. Now, if you do want to learn more about the page designer, check out the description of this video where I've left some helpful resources and make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit the bell for notifications because we will be releasing a video on the page designer soon. But let's move on from the page designer and look at how we can automate your invoice generation using a platform like QuickBooks or Pandadoc. We'll first look at just setting an automation, then we'll look at a webhook. And then after that section, we'll be looking at how you can connect this to a platform like Docs Automator or Document 
to create beautifully branded invoices for your business. Jumping back into our automation system, we're going to take a look at a couple ways that we could trigger an invoice generation. The first we're going to do from the status. When someone updates the status of an invoice record, well, we want an invoice to be generated. So we can see the status field here. If we edit that, we'll see our options. We've got drafting, review, sent, paid, and overdue. When an invoice changes from drafting to review, we want this invoice to be generated and then sent to our client and then update that status again. So if we jump into automations, we'll first discuss how we could connect to QuickBooks or PandaDoc or whatever financial platform you're using. Well, we can't natively integrate our Airtable with these platforms. So instead, we'll have to use an automation platform like Zapier. Now, we could use a webhook by creating an automation so that when our record is updated and that status changes to review, we run a script that sends data from our base over to Zapier. Or we could make things much simpler and just connect Airtable to our Zapier account so that when a new record is created or a record is updated, and then we set that conditional logic again for the status review, we connect to QuickBooks, we create an invoice, and then we send that invoice. And then a final step would be to update the same record in Airtable so the status reflects that the invoice has been sent. However, there are other processes to generate an invoice and a more common and arguably better process is to use the button field. Here we have a generate invoice button and this is where webhooks will come in. So if we edit this field, we know that we can open a URL. If we use an automation platform like Zapier, NetN or make.com, we can generate an endpoint URL where we pass the data from our invoice table and our invoice system over to that automation platform and then connect that with QuickBooks or whatever platform you're using. Now, this flow is going to look very similar to the flow we just created in Zapier. However, instead of the updated record trigger, we're going to be using a webhook. So if we select the webhook here, this will open up the configuration. We've got a test URL and a production. I'm just going to copy the test URL and we're going to paste that in our button. So here we can see we've got the current URL. However, we need to bring in the data from our invoice table so that we can share it with N8N and therefore pass it on to QuickBooks. So here we can see we've got the webhook URL. We're passing the invoice number. We're passing the account name, the total amount, the due date, and the status. If we save this, jump back over to N8N, we'll listen for a test event, and we're going to click generate invoice. We'll see here that the workflow has started. If we jump back over to N8N, the workflow has successfully initiated and we've got that data being passed over. From there, we're then going to pass those data values into each individual step before updating the record status to sent. However, of course, you might not be using QuickBooks, PandaDoc, or a financial bookkeeping platform to generate, send, and track your invoices. And instead, you want an out-of-the-box solution. That's where Docs Automator or Document comes in. So here we are in Docs Automator. We've connected our data source, which is Airtable. And from there, we're generating a document from a template. The great thing about Docs Automator is it enables you to build beautiful functional documents, including invoices, right within the platform. So if we select Edit, we want to edit that template. Here we'll see that we have the instructions for those. And here we can see we've got the invoice. And here, somewhat similar to the page designer in Airtable, we have a document editor here in Docs Automator. And much like the document editor we saw for the page designer in the Airtable extension, we have a similar setup here in Docs Automator. Now, any place that we've included these dynamic open curly brackets is a place that we're able to map fields from our Airtable data source over to this invoice template. So you want to create a template for your invoices including all the necessary information that you feel you will need. And then from there, you'll save and continue and you'll move on to the next step, which will be Airtable data mapping. So here we can see we've got the base selected, the invoice generator, the primary table. We're actually moving over data from invoices, the document name field. Well, that's going to be the invoice number, the attachment field. We'll leave that blank. And here we have those fields to map the client name. That of course is going to be the account, the street. That will be the bill to address, the zip, so on and so forth. So work your way mapping those fields. I've also made sure to leave a helpful resource on how you can use platforms like Docs Automator and Document 
to build your generated documents. From here, you'll then move on through the steps and you'll come to additional actions. This is where you can toggle on the send email option in order to send this attached newly generated invoice over to your account client. Again, you'll just map through the account bill to email and happy days. From there, you'll then move on to the Airtable data mapping. This is where you'll select the base, the primary table, the document name, which is going to be dynamic, the attachment field. This is very important. Once your invoice or your document has been generated in Docs Automator, you want to have a file attachment field in your Airtable base so that invoice can be connected directly there. Not only is it a place to store, but it's also a place for your internal workers to be able to view the invoice after generated and also sent. Jumping back into Docs Automator, it's from here that you'll need to map your fields over to the document template. Client name is the account or client, the street address, so on and so forth. From there, you'll continue on, save and continue. And this is when it comes to the generation options. So here we can see you'll be able to set that, but we'll skip that for now because we want to take a look at sending an email. So here we've got the send email option. We'll select that, the docs automated email. Nope, we want to send it from our Gmail. So you'll be prompted to connect your Gmail account. Do that. Once you've connected your Gmail account, you'll want to edit the content of the email. You will need to have a map field for the bill to email so that it comes through here. That's something I didn't mention. You'll want to do that. The from name, subject, the content, yada, yada. And we'll also have the option attach generated PDF to email. Attach the invoice to email. You'll want to do that. Then you'll just update the email body. You'll save that. And from there, you'll then need to set up the document creation in Airtable, which is going to be a script. So we'll copy this. We'll jump into automations. We'll create a new automation here. And it's going to be a trigger event. So when record is created in the invoices table, we want to run script and we'll paste the script there. Let's test that. We can see the test ran successfully. So if we jump back into Docs Automator, we can see an invoice has been generated there. Now you can take this even further and set up approval processes for your invoices. Have someone generate it and someone approve. And another quick tip that I want to show you is sending auto reminder emails. So we know that we have the due date here, right there. That's our due date. If we jump into automations, I've quickly created an automation which will send an email to remind our client they need to pay it if it hasn't been paid. And you can take it further still because if you aren't using a platform like QuickBooks or PandaDoc, they will automatically send reminder follow-up emails for you. You can set that up with Zapier, Make.com, N8N, any of the automation platforms or natively within Airtable. So if you want to learn how to do that, I've left some helpful resources in the description of this video or leave a comment telling us you want to see a video on it and we will create one for you. Now, beyond just having this within a database, you can also lean on interfaces to manage your invoices. Now, if you want to take a look at how you can generate invoices through Airtable interfaces, we've got another video that solely focuses on that. So make sure you watch that there. You'll be amazed at how much time you and your team can save by setting up similar systems in Airtable. If you want to learn more or you need help building a system, then don't hesitate to reach out to us at automationhelpers.com where our team of experts are offering a free 30-minute consultation. So book yours today. <laughs>